Hello everyone and welcome back to Send It's Weather channel where today we will be looking at the latest from the model output to see what they are showing for the next few weeks. Primarily of course focusing on next week and also on this really really torrential rain and the flooding which has occurred in some amber warning areas. Not just in the amber warnings as well, I've seen places such as York, Burst the Banks and even some snow over the Scottish mountains. Cheers James for um, sending in the eclipse and I'll put them in in a minute but yeah we're gonna be looking at the latest and the title is true this low pressure system next week could impact any snow potential it could really reduce or gain it depending on its position and we're going to see what all the models are predicting today on that so yeah if you do enjoy today's video consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel yes i do have a little bit of some sort of cold bug thing i don't know what it is going around there's some sort of horrible <laughs> mess going on i've been sniffling and sneezing all that rubbish today but there you go you can't help it can you <laughs> we've got some higher pressure up towards greenland and iceland lower pressures out to the southwest and this low pressure system to the southwest getting cut off is bringing in this really heavy rainfall to parts of the midlands south wales um and the east southeast into the central britain as well and parts of northern ireland and the republic of ireland very very heavy rainfall totals upwards of 100 millimetres in some parts. Also, it's coming in from an easterly direction as opposed to westerly direction with the position of the low pressure, so it's really causing um, issues which weren't foreseen before. But yeah, really, um, really heavy rain on that. Yeah, got higher pressure up towards Greenland, lower pressure to the south, winds in from a north easterly direction in the north. So turning cold, we've seen a few wintry showers. And um, yeah, turning colder, but you can see quite mild down in the south. Now, moving on, we do see higher pressure retrogresses into the Atlantic. Not fully, but it does turn colder for all by Monday next week. And then um, eventually the high pressure breaks through, um, slips southwards to, or over the top of the country, slips southwards, but retro retrogress out in the Atlantic. And then this is a little feature, <laughs> the little pesky, pesky bugger causing all the problems. This system here, that is potentially moving through the country and going to prevent the cold from arriving now as we can see with this gfs run with the way it develops it develops over into the south of the country so on the northern side of that on the northern side of these lows could be rain sleet snow obviously for the south it's rain but for central england northern england there could be snow because you can see colder air to the north milder air to the south and you've got the colder air pushing down from the north milder air pushing up from the south so on the northern edge of that central northern britain could be snow the precipitation chart's broken today so i can't actually show you that but um i'd imagine snow for central northern england obviously rain for the midlands southwards but central northern england could be quite a big snow event there Again, you can see there was that clears away to the east. We're back. All areas are back into a north northeasterly flow. With wintry showers pushing into particularly north and eastern areas, but you couldn't rule out some little features um, at short notice, such as little um, little troughs and kinks in the ice bars, with um, increasing shower activity. Now, going on with this GFS run, just for fun, you can see that um, lower pressure systems begin to push him off from off the Atlantic by the 22nd, breaking down the cold spell. Does try and get colder again, uh, with higher pressure bridging out in the Atlantic uh, by Wednesday the 26th, but that's a long way off. And then it does turn colder again from the northwest briefly. What was that? <laughs> and then higher pressure is trying to build back over the top of the UK. So, yeah, a very uncertain chart i must say from the gfs today moving on to the gm then again higher pressure out to the west of the uk and it is really pulling out to the west again we're under that high pressure through the gilly part of next week before by tuesday that low pressure system is there that is the low pressure system on the gem so you can see it's it's there it's evident but it's like a little trough moving southwards that could be like a weather front really uh, if it was a weather front it's not it's a, it's a, little, it's a little kink in the ice of that. Um, and then that clears out to the east and brings down a cold northerly wind now with that there won't be much snowfall it's not like a developed um, low pressure system with the gem will be a bit around like of course patchy snow wintry flurries in places can see a, a low sliding southwards by Thursday within that cold air. That could have some fun and games in the North Sea and for the south and southwest, actually. Um, as that clears away um, into the Atlantic, that could have some fun and games with it. But you can see even by the end of the run, by day 10, the GEM still shows block conditions up towards Greenland. And obviously we're bringing in some slightly less cold air from the west-northwest. But it won't take much. 
for that higher pressure to retrogress in the Atlantic again. And there is signs of that from some of the model output, but it is a long way off. Can't even get the synoptic patterns right up to the 21st. So who knows really what might happen. When we've got the ECMWF only running today nine, but we don't need any more than that, let's be honest. You can see again that higher pressure pulling out in the Atlantic. Very good consistency on that. But that low pressure system is much more developed on the ECM. So all the cold air is stuck to the north of that. So it's over the Shetland Isles um, there. So you can see how the cold air is prevented to the north. Eventually it pushes through and brings down a quite a strong northerly wind. That low pressure clears into the North Sea and out towards the Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark. And it turns colder again with a northerly wind. Breaks down that cold spell much quicker. And we're going to a west-north-westly flow. Nothing too crazy, but just more Atlantic-driven. Fresh conditions, just Atlantic-driven. Um, just more unsettled, really. But still wouldn't be anything remarkable. Just average temperatures for the time of year. Once this brief cold snap goes away. But yeah, this has really spun up um, the ideas from the models uh, for the next few weeks. But if we have a look at the ECM precipitation type from... Uh, WX charts, you can see if we skip through, you can see the colder air beginning to sink southwards through Tuesday. So wintry showers, quite persistent wintry showers in the north. And as you can see, there's that low pressure system there, 988 millibars. And as that clears out to the east, we can see that all the colder air begins to filter southwards. So we actually see some quite widespread wintry showers for Northern England, obviously, the Yorkshire Dales, um, your highest points, some, uh, some um, of the West Midlands as well. South Wales, of your highest ground. Again, a few wintry showers possible in isolated spots through Wednesday. It has been um, shown a few times as well, even in the southeast. I wouldn't trust that. <laughs> um, you can see precipitations around. And then obviously as the milder air moves in, there could be a transitional snow event um, for Northern England. Uh, but it does look very unsettled after that and quite mild. Um, but yeah, it could be a few wintry showers. Couldn't rule them out, in the, especially along the eastern coast, across Northern Scotland. Could see a few centimetres over the highest ground. I wouldn't expect too much to lower levels. Um, and obviously these placements of snow, wintry showers, are obviously subject to change. And they're not a forecast, but yeah, just something interesting to look at, isn't it? Something interesting to think about. And then moving on to look at the ECM AI, Artificial Intelligence Model. Again, higher pressure pulling out in the Atlantic up towards Greenland. And then by Tuesday, Wednesday, we're all into a cold northerly flow. But this area of low pressure is also formed on this model. And obviously to the north of that, we've got milder air. Um, oh, sorry, colder air to the north of it, milder air to the south of it, which kind of disturbs the flow. All the cold air goes, gets diverted. But eventually, as it clears out um, to our east, we bring down that cold northerly wind. Now, interesting with the AI model, it actually keeps still remains at, um, some blocking or like some higher than average pressure up to the north and northwest. So it actually allows a bit of an east northeastly um, flow. It's very slack, but it would keep the temperatures colder for a little bit longer than the other run. So until around the 23rd, before eventually that run also goes. Atlantic driven, higher pressure back to the south, lower pressure to the north. So yeah, all eyes on the models is what I'd say um, for the next few weeks. And then if you look at the UK Met Office run as well, for comparison, if we go to that date, it does show that lower pressure system and it's just like much less developed. Um, obviously, it could bring actually some snow through central southern England there. It might even bring some into the Midlands southwards um, if this um, UK Met Office run is there. That's that low pressure system and the colder air is wrapped in behind that. So that could even bring in a little bit of wintriness. A lot more um, unsettled as well. Maybe a few low pressure systems pushing through um, or little features pushing through on the in the following days as well. Keeps the block going until the very end of the run for it looks like it's about to topple. So definitely one to watch. It's not a done deal yet. We could see snow in parts. Now, if we have a look at a very high elevation location, we'll have a look at Buxton. You can see milder air. For the next day before we do see a plunge towards colder conditions for a time for about four to five days before temperatures look to recover back to average at least um a bit of uncertainty around the 27th of november we could see another cold snap but that's a long way off and very unreliable but you can see three four five days of colder conditions some of this precipitation could be wintry if we have a look at the snow row for buxton obviously quite high elevation location and um, we're only focused on this but you can see about 30 to 40 percent chance probably a little bit higher because it is quite high elevation 300 to 400 meters above sea level but yeah one to watch is what i'd say one to watch might be able to show you the um the gem as well 
um, GM run, which obviously this one loves to um, show ridiculous snow totals, but I'll quickly show you this reference. And if you enjoyed today's video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. As always, I do appreciate your continued support. There's that low fresh system pushing through on Tuesday, bringing some quite heavy snow to Northern England, Southern Scotland at least. That clears through to the southeast. Could be a little bit of wintering associated with that, but mostly cold rain. Um, and then when you just see a few wintry showers, little features might appear at short notice. There's one over Northern Ireland, but I wouldn't take the um, the snow risk too literal there. A little feature there on the um, 23rd of November, producing snow as far south as London. I highly doubt that. Um, but yeah, yeah, one to watch is what I'd say. So definitely turning colder, possibly wintrier, particularly in the north, over your northern hills, Scottish mountains, Scottish glens, uh, Ben Nevis. <laughs> um, and um, possibly to lower levels at times, but very much uncertain picture, especially with that low pressure system. If it does the right track, which they do change track quite a lot, if it does change its track and is moved further southwards, then on that northern edge, could see a lot of snow falling, because the colder air meets the milder air, could be a big boundary um, there. But we'll have to wait and see how it develops. Also very interesting on the strat. I'll go through all that on the live stream at 7pm tomorrow. So hopefully you can tune in to see it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.